Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Ruger firearms are manufactured with precision and are capable of delivering extremely accurate and repeatable shot placement without spending a lot of money. For example, this Ruger American retails for around $500 and often delivers sub-minute of angle accuracy. Precision doesn't have to come with a hefty price tag. Ruger makes precision firearms that all responsible citizens can afford And that makes me a proud Ruger American. Hey everybody, we're coming at you live from Hunt Expo. We're at the Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls booth and we're with the founder, Rocky Jacobson, Kent Anderson, and Josh Fields. Uh, This is part of the team. You guys are, you know, Josh, you're kind of new on the team. Kent, you're new on the team. Josh, you've been on the team for quite a while, but new officially in a really official capacity. But uh, it's good to be here seeing everybody. Yeah, it's uh, been a good show so far. Yeah. And uh, I really am glad and want to welcome Josh to Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls along with Ken Anderson. Yeah. And your title position is marketing and sales. That is correct. And you that are social correct. media. That's dun, correct. Dun, yeah. dun. I know. Our marketing director <laughs> has the best hair. Apart from mine. <laughs> well, like I said before, you, you have to bring something to the table, and I guess I got good hair, so uh, I'll use it. I have good hair. Yeah, you do. Do you know who you look like, though? Just oh. a sidebar here. Did you ever... <laughs> I don't, no, I don't, but I'm, I'm going to find out real quick. You guys ever watch those vampire shows where they had, like, the werewolf so. guys and then the, the vampire people? What was that called? Not Vampire Diaries. It was... Uh, Twilight, yes, it's Twilight. You're yeah. like a werewolf. Werewolf, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Go I'll, I'll like accept it. that. Yeah, <laughs> more just, like, just don't give these guys any more ammunition. To... <laughs> it's really suiting that you sell and uh, work with a call company, and you're a world champion. I am. Caller. I have not won the worlds yet. I've taken second, second and third okay. in, well, in, in the men's pro. So. Let's split hairs here. <laughs> and I am not ever bugling again, so he can claim that he beat the world champion. Oh. <laughs> but he has beat the world champion yeah, I, because he ended up in second and third and I ended up fourth and fifth. Yeah, so yeah, he has beat me. It's such a subjective, <laughs> uh, you know, when you go to a calling competition, mm-hmm. you know, what what might be really good sounding to your ear, the judge might not like. Like I noticed that with a lot of cow calls. Like I would do, you know, like some external read cow calls to kind of get that estrus nasally sound. And then I think my cow calf calls are dynamic and then I had a judge one time tell me she's like you know he or she I won't say who uh he or she was like you know uh your cow calls could be improved and I'm like man like I think that's like my strong point in life I was like (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, it is a very subjective to the judges that run that and you never know what they want to hear yeah and uh, you may get up there and sound the best of everything and not even place. Mm-hmm. So it, uh, it's still fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done it several times and I like to do it to win the prizes, especially now that they got the money up there oh, yeah. pretty good. It's yeah. kind of fun to do that. Uh, you know, you, you talk about being subjective to as a calling contest to the judges, but what, something I kind of want to lead into is that the company itself has about 75 or 80 world championship titles all the way from the professional division, men's open, women's, yeah. youth, peewees. There's been somebody winning the world's championship using Rocky Mountain hunting calls and really no other company can even come close mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. Most of them have maybe nine, ten mm-hmm. under their belt or one or two. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so we've been really fortunate to have a lot of good callers representing Rocky Mountain hunting call. Mm-hmm. Well, we, you also make an extremely, you know, dynamic product that sounds realistic and you're always innovating and um, 
But before we head into innovation and all of that, let's Kent, how did you end up on the team? Let's let's so, back this up a little because you know you've yeah, been around yeah. a long time. Yeah, I ended up. It was about 2010. I was down in Vegas at Elk Camp with Montana Decoy, and I ended up running it into everybody there, and then. There's an application process a couple years later, and I was brought onto the team in about 2012. And then it's just been doing shows and helping out everywhere I can in the company. Mm -hmm. And so it's going on about a decade now. So it's been fun and really enjoying taking another step into the company and doing a little more. The new out. guy has only been around a decade. Like, <laughs> let's just put that into perspective. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been a lot of work, but it's been fun. Funny. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, yep. uh, it, we're, you know, we're glad to have you on after a decade. <laughs> we're like, that doesn't even make sense to me. You're like, I've been around for a decade. It's all good. I'm in the new guy. <laughs> but yeah. I think I met Rocky in my mid twenties. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. and it's been a while. Yeah. And so I went, it was really kind of funny. I went to a seminar in, um, Eugene, you guys were doing at, the, at an archery shop there. And I went there. It was you and Lance actually doing the seminar. Oh, Jim Horn. No, it was Jim Horn. Yeah, yeah Jim that's Horn. right. It was you and Jim Horn. <clears throat> and um, I walked up to you afterwards. And I was like, I don't know who makes these calls, but I think they're the best. And you're like, well, those are my calls. <laughs> so it was so of, happens to be. Well, this was before we stamped a logo on the diaphragms. Mm -hmm. You know, you just walked around with a diaphragm call there wasn't all this branding right and you threw the package away you had, had no, no idea clue. who made it or what it was you just knew you bought yeah. it somewhere along the line the only thing that was is at that time we were the only company along with will primos mm -hmm. could ever use and promote the pallet plate diaphragm mm -hmm. because of the patent that it had mm -hmm. and a lot of companies out there have just frothed at the mouth wanting to get a hold of that call it's, it's kind of funny because in the beginning, everybody bad-mouthed it. They said, oh, that'll never work. It's a piece of junk and all that. But as soon as the patent up, boy, every one of them jumped mm -hmm. on the bandwagon. Right. <laughs> yep. So they were just a little envious, I do believe. Mm -hmm. so, it happens. You know, when, yeah. you, when you innovate product, and, you know, that's, that's the great thing about our industry is innovation is always driving us to, yes. to be better and build better. And, um, you know, Rocky, you're kind of the lead engineer that's behind Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, obviously since in its inception when, when you founded the company. And um, how do you come up with all this stuff? Like, it just blows my mind. You know, I, I, I kind of wonder sometimes, yeah. too, where the ideas come from. But I can tell you this. I, I walk down the aisle in a hardware store in the PVC part department, and I can look at fittings or in the toy department or whatever, and I see things. Well, I can take that and make that into an elk call or I can recreate something out of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, my mind just goes 24 seven on how to make something better. Mm -hmm. you know, and when I worked in the woods all the time, we were constantly having to repair our, our saws or you know, our, our axes and stuff. And there was times when you had to improvise with a lot of things to get by so you didn't have to hike clear to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to build stuff out of nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you got to do. Just think and think and think. And the more you're involved with calls, it all of a sudden just clicks with you. Mm -hmm. Well, we could do this and that. And, you know, I've watched guys work for me that had no clue about innovation and how to design. But the more they're around calls, all of a sudden yes. they're giving me ideas. Let's do this and that. So it They just, retrain their brain to yeah. think of things. In, you know, it comes with the territory, you know. And, We've always prided ourselves at Rocky Mountain of never copying anybody else. Mm -hmm. We've always come up with our own ideas, uh, our own inventions, and, and we're still doing that. And just to give a little pun here, I've got some ideas for new elk calls that nobody's ever seen, mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to be exciting when uh, we come out with them. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's one great thing. So let's talk about, like, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls started the bread and butter of the company and really what the company is famous for is elk calls. Mm -hmm. But we don't just have elk calls at this company. We have wolf calls, moose calls, turkey calls, predator calls. Um, we've got uh, deer grunt calls. We've got uh, the roe deer calls. I mean, mm -hmm. we're like Yogi and I were in Axis Sweden. Deer, we yeah, we, with them. Yeah, yeah, we've got, you know, we were in Sweden and hunting roe deer and, and we had a call for roe deer. And yeah. it's really incredible you know, how you guys went from just being, you know, a one focused company, which was bugling bull game calls, mm -hmm. and you've now expanded to Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, where um, where it's such a dynamic company, and, and you, you build something to make every sound. 
Yeah, it's been been a challenge. Uh, the company has grown leaps and bounds because of a lot of good people that are behind us, and mm -hmm. we're able to get that, get out there. And especially our pro staff. I mean, if without them, the company would have never went anywhere. Yeah. You know, and you can pat me on the back all you want, but if I didn't have guys underneath me that we have, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have went anywhere with yeah. just me. Yeah. You know. So and that speaks volumes to Rocky's eye for a knack for talent and good yeah. character people. You know, it's the same way how Ken started 10 plus years ago, the same way that I came into it, how you met Rocky. It was a, I was in Kalispell, you were at a show there. Yeah. And yeah. right away I knew Rocky was just because mm -hmm. of the calls. And I'm like, if I want to be successful in the elk woods first, I need to learn how to call and call like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of always had a, a deal where you don't have to be with the best, you get with the best. And so I got on the shirt tails and hung around and Rock took a liking to me and Next thing you know, we're talking all the time, you and you're on the think staff. I took a liking and then, to you. and then he always has to tell the famous story. Well, you told me you liked me once, but <laughs> he took it he, back. He tells a famous story though, and I used to work. I'm going to tell a story on up Josh in, in Whitefish. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, that's just being smart. I'm. Go I have the show up there that he's talking about in Kalispell, and I'm staying with Jim Brennan. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And that kind of led into <laughs> the problem. Just, <laughs> that clearly leads into a lot of problems. Uh, Jim, <laughs> you, Jim usually rides with me to the show, but this time he didn't. So yeah. I'm driving through Whitefish, and I come into the town to the intersection, and I get a phone call. And I pick the phone up, and I, I'm sitting at the stoplight waiting for the light to change. And I talk a little bit, and I hang back up and pull out. I noticed a, a police car sitting there, but I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so down the road I go, and all of a sudden the lights come on, and I go... I know I didn't do anything. Those stupid cops, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I did say that. So I pulled off. So much for back in the blue rock. Right. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how it is when you get pulled over. It's like, what the heck? If I'm beaten and get caught, that's fine, you know. No, nah, I just, I roll down my window and I'm sitting there going, here's my license, here's my insurance card. I look up and I go, you got to kid me. <laughs> he goes, you got any elk calls for sale? <laughs> hey, Rock. How are you? Yeah, I'd seen Rocky come through town, and, and that was kind of early in the beginning, you know, quite a few years ago. And he comes through town. He was, you know, breaking the law in the city of Whitefish with cell phone, and so you can't took use the cell chance to, to make contact with him and educate him about the cell phone, and then we talk elk calls for just a little <laughs> bit and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, of course, the sign Noticing that they have. Noticing he just, like, totally protected himself. Like, no, he actually was doing this. I wasn't just fanboying. <laughs> hey, 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 right. He's like, he cannot yeah. sue me now. Yeah. <laughs> he was on his phone, Rocky. I wasn't I was doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, said all said that right. too when I got my cell phone ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, all right, where's the sign at? I was in a stoplight, though, okay? Yeah. Asked yeah. him where the sign was coming into town. He goes, you ain't going to see it. It's a little square about this big. <laughs> a sign for cell phones? I think yeah. this is like a common thing now. Like, you're yeah. not supposed well, to use Well, at that phone. time, there were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was new. It just started. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't even aware of it. Every town is different. Yeah. Every city's different. It's at yeah. that time. So. That's funny. Yeah. That's a good way to get somebody's attention. Yeah. Is pull yeah. them yeah. over. And, I, of course, I didn't have any elk calls for him. No, of course not. And it worked, and, and he hasn't been able to get rid of me since. That was kind of like my situation, too. But he looked at me, and he was like, look, I'll bring you on our pro staff, but just because you're a pretty girl doesn't mean we're going to keep you. <laughs> like, you actually have to do something, and if you don't, right. then you're off the team. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, but we've She been, did well. We've been friends yeah. ever since, yeah. and, and we're like family, really. Like, um, you know, anytime I go through Idaho, I just call Rocky and Rena up, and I go crash at their house, and... Whether they want me to or not. <laughs> oh, that's neat. We, we've so, hunted together a few times. Yeah, and we do a lot. Of, we had a great spring bear hunt yeah. together this year, and um, yeah. we've had quite a few good bear hunts together, I, actually. I had to blindfold you, though. Yeah. <laughs> Take you to my secret bear yeah. hunt camp. I know. That's <laughs> not good. really. But yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're in predator season right now, and um, so let's talk about, you know, some of the calls we have for, for predators. Okay. Um, you know... A lot of people like using electronic calls, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with electronic calls. In fact, I use them too, and Lance, our pro staff for creditors, uses them quite a bit. But you got to be able to use the handheld stuff too, mm -hmm. along with the electronic calls. Give it the coyotes a different sound so that they're not accustomed yeah, to make yourself get versatile. Well, you can put mm -hmm. more Trade emotions that, yeah. into your calling mm -hmm. than you can with an electronic call. 
and the way these coyotes are being called anymore, you've got to have something that they're going to be attracted to. Yeah. So I like to start off all the time with using my handheld stuff so I can put the emotions into it. But we got howlers, and that's what we like to do is howl first, mm -hmm. make sure there's coyotes out there, and they howl back, and then you set up. But the main reason the e-call's out there is so when they do get in close, you're not moving, you. it's away from you. they got the decoy going, mm -hmm. and uh, then you're able to shoot them. But... Uh, you got to do both, mm -hmm. really, to have total success. And mm -hmm. some of our Atomic 13s, uh, the little raspy, the big raspy, the, mm -hmm. those calls are mm -hmm. awesome. They're for easy handles. to use. Yeah. Easy to use. You just blow them, and you sound, you know, like something that's seriously dying. Um, one of the one of the cool things we've got going is the cartridge calls. Mm -hmm. They look like a, a bullet, bullet. Yeah. and a little 223. I know, I've been stressed flying with those. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> but, what's going to happen when I fly with this? Don't yeah, leave it in your yeah, backpack. <laughs> they're not going to go through security. No, <laughs> you got to watch those. But what they're cool for is put them on your keychain. Yeah. How many times you drove down the road and there's a coyote? you know, mm -hmm. out there and you want to play with it. Mm -hmm. You don't have calls with you most of the time, but always have your keys with you. So you mm -hmm. put those on your keychain. It's just a, a way to have calls with you. And they're inexpensive, but Designed they work really good. Designed for the really road good. hunter in you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Actually, I should say opportunity hunter. The opportunity yeah. hunter. So. Yeah. You touched on a good point too with easy to use. Uh, I think with most of our products, especially with our diaphragms, we strive to make the best quality yeah. product out there. And with that being said, user-friendly. Mm -hmm. We have user-friendly products uh, for somebody that's just beginning mm -hmm. to be able to get to that intermediate and advanced level. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a testament to Rocky and, and the product development and all that to him. I mean, you check out our products, they're user-friendly and they sound great. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and on the other hand, they're professional grade too. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, the guy that really knows what he's doing, they'll meet the demands. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it's, just because we say they're beginner call, that doesn't mean it's made just for yeah. a beginner. Well, example with, you know, Black Magic, and I think that's in our intermediate line, but that is that's what I use on call. the world champion uh, stage at, at the World Championships, and that's what I use in the woods as well. And yeah. I mean, it's so yeah, proof yeah. is in the pudding, so to speak. Well, and what I also like about the calls is. Um, there's not like a one size fits all for everyone. Everybody has like their go to. Mm -hmm. My dad's go to is different than my go to. Your go to is different than my go to. And a lot of that has to do with the shape of your mouth palate um, or how much you apply uh, tongue pressure on latex and how you bend that latex with your tongue. So different thicknesses of latexes or stretches of latex are going to give you a different octave variation. And, and just the user itself is going to make each call you know, from person to person have a slightly dynamic or different sound, um, which makes it, yeah. you know, you know, you'll have your favorites and, and your, your, you know, I love the, the palette plate calls, the traditional flat palette plates, you know, the, what are they not called tone tops anymore? You guys changed the name to them now. Well, just a dome type. Dome top. Yeah. Um, we got the TST top. TST, yeah. And we got the mm -hmm. uh, TST. GTP plate. Yeah. And we got the RTS. <laughs> we talked and, acronyms. Uh, I'm like, oh my God, how do I remember? It used to be tone top yeah. Yeah. and palette plate. And yeah. now we've evolved into all this other stuff. And I, it's like French to me because I'm like, tone top or palette plate? That's, that's what I remember. I go <laughs> back to. Well, something that I keyed in on a long time ago and is uh, repetitious calling. If you sound the same over and over and over, and everybody else has the same, same call, sound. same sound, animals key in on that, especially elk. Mm -hmm. And by designing the palette plate and all these calls, everybody is unique in their own way. Yeah. They all have their own little pitches, their own sound. And uh, that messes an animal's brain up, yeah. and they can't understand that it is something they should be leery of. It's not repetitious, they're gonna mm -hmm. come and check it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always tried to make every call I've done a little more unique than the last yeah. one that I've done. It may not be much of a change that our human ear can hear, but those animals can tell it. Yeah. But it, it also has a lot to do with the emotions you put into that calling. Some calls, I, I don't put the emotions into it because it's harder on certain calls, but other calls it's real easy to put emotions into it. And So each one of them are variations of different sounds. and. That's what makes our call company so successful with the animals in the field because there's so many different sounds that they can't key in on that repetitious sound. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and you can take one diaphragm and you can do cow calf muse and chirps and estrus buzzes mm -hmm. and and uh, the the vo the vocabulary you can do with a diaphragm elk vocabulary is is incredible, and you're completely hands free. Just turning your head um, and you know curling you know your tongue or, or applying a little e to mm -hmm. you know like a little grunt to the call when you're doing a diaphragm um, changes everything. You know does that 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 buzz sound and. Um, with one call, you can make a tremendous variety, and then even swapping out a diaphragm, diaphragm to diaphragm, change it up, make a different sound, yeah. and you sound instead of like one elk making the same sound over and over and over. Now you sound like six or seven, or yeah. Well, yeah. even you know, like with Kent, you know, bugle tubes all make different sounds too, and mm -hmm. you can hit on that if you want a little bit. Just I, everyone's from, you know, you get them in your hand and you see a big tube or a small tube and they all have different tones to them based on the build of that tube and so when you start applying different diaphragms with with those tubes you can completely change mm -hmm. how you're calling and so it's amazing to see the difference just a little tune and it uh it it can completely change your day based on what you use so yeah. they may not like it one day and then the next day all of a sudden they're firing well, up like and crazy. you can hit one call and get no response and you're like get frustrated and swap a call <laughs> and you do one sound and they're boom yeah. instantly back or they cut you off mm -hmm. yep. i mean it's it's incredible yeah. uh, the and turkeys are the same way oh, yeah. Yeah. you know turkey hunting predators are the same too i mean you can have five or six handheld calls and not a thing and all of a sudden you pull out one little squeaker and hit it and man here they come mm -hmm. and that all changes from day to day mm -hmm. that's why you have to have so many variations of calls with yeah. you because every day is different yeah. and if you're not ready to meet those demands you're not going to be successful no. so yeah. going into turkeys we have a whole turkey lineup and in my favorite turkey call like like i love our slate call um, but our strutter box, yeah. that thing, mm -hmm. I don't care what, I can hit that slate, la, 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 and I'm working the slate, and the turkeys don't seem to be doing a ton. Um, but this strutter box here, man, when I hit this thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> every time, like, ask my husband, we were turkey hunting last year, and I'd be, I'd be on the slate, and nothing and then this i don't it's like the most mm -hmm. magical call <laughs> and it's so woods. easy to and run so anybody a little kid can pick this up and run mm -hmm. it you know mm -hmm. it's yeah yeah that's my go-to yeah um i like using mouth diaphragm but only at the last moment yeah when you're there and close well i shoot them with a shoot them with my bow most mm -hmm. of the time so your hands are tied up to run this so i yeah. switch over when they start coming in and my mouth calls but you can purr on these things you can putt cackle you know they do everything so it's it's really a very versatile call and very easy to use yeah. Yeah. you know you get into your slates they're great sounding but you know they're a little harder to figure out mm -hmm. and get the There's right a angle sweet spot, mm -hmm. and you have to rough up the yeah. slate and Hey guys, Christy Titus here. Because I don't have the opportunity to get out on the ground to scout some of my non-resident hunting unit draws I'm at home doing some e-scouting Using Onyx Hunt lets me prepare for my upcoming hunts this fall right from my computer. And now you have access to 3D features and functions that are found within the app right on your desktop. Using Onyx Hunt to help you e-scout ahead of time means that when you hit the ground this hunting season, you'll have a better lay of the land so you can spend your time hunting and not trying to figure out where to go. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and download Onyx Hunt and try it today. This year we announced kind of a new aluminum uh, pot call that's mm -hmm. a, a secondary option to like a traditional slate. And, and what's the de design and the mindset behind that? Well, there's always been aluminum pot calls on mm -hmm. the market, but this one's real thin and lightweight and it carries a tone different than the heavier, thicker mm -hmm. ones do. Uh, it makes it vibrate a little easier too, mm -hmm. be, by being thin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and the pitch is definitely different. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a pitch that's going to drive those turkeys yeah. mad because yeah. it's a high pitch oh, yelp. Mm -hmm. And 
But uh, that's the key to a lot of success is just having the different sounds that those animals want to hear at any given time. And, and the turkey diaphragms, I think we have three different diaphragms, yes. correct? Well, no, there's four. Four, four different four diaphragms. Four diaphragms. Okay. Yeah, and uh, each one of them are unique. Uh, you know, they got triples, they got special cuts out of them, and mm -hmm. uh, the typical... They have special cuts, they're like... They're like uh, rock and roll diaphragms almost. They're really yeah. cool looking. Like they're pretty. Yeah. They're pretty aggressive looking um, calls. They're they're really. You know, and they're they're made with a flat side. They don't have a top on yeah. them at all or a pallet plate. But we do make one called the Captain Hook that has a plate on it, mm -hmm. and it's more of a younger bird sound, a higher pitch mm -hmm. hen yelp. Uh, it works really well too. But we have a, a variety of turkey calls to match what you need out there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. our turkey calls do have a slightly wider palette. So they don't have the top. The palette is a little bit wider. And that doesn't fit super well in a lot of people's mouths. What I do is I kind of cant it sideways. Mm -hmm. And then I can make it work um, in that way. And, you know, it's, it's just a more limited line. The sounds are incredible yeah. that you get out of those calls um it just happens to be that the wider frames is where your raspy sounds you come from sound. mm -hmm. you there the more narrow you get then you get higher pitch and can't get the raspy sounds as good but i have a baby mouth yeah <laughs> <laughs> the world champion callers in in the world that's what they want they like those, those wide, yeah, those wide those ones wide and they operate them mm -hmm. and purr on them better mm -hmm. and, and all that and I'm not, I'm, I can make them work, yeah. but I'm not as good as some of those guys. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Some of the sounds that some people make are just astonishing. That's right. why I like the strutter box, yeah. because I can just <laughs> do this really seamlessly and, and yeah. it's easy to use and really intuitive on that. Um, and I, I'm like you, Rocky. I like to bow hunt turkeys and, um, you know, pretty much have exclusively switched to archery hunting turkeys and, um, when they do come in close and they start getting close, you do have to be hands-free. And so having the, yeah. the call as an option is great. And, you know, sometimes they're a little bit like an elk, too. You know, when they come in and they start strutting, you can kind of sit back sometimes and just let them, let, let the decoys do the work as well and, and, yeah. and wait for that moment mm -hmm. as well. One thing that I've started doing with turkey calling is I wear what they call a hex suit. Mm -hmm. And that has made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. You can get away with so much stuff wearing that hex suit, mm -hmm. especially with a bow. You mm -hmm. can get them in close and then mm -hmm. you can draw right out in the open with them. Mm -hmm. uh, for people that want to know more about that hex suit, they can get a hold of us or, mm -hmm. you know, and that or get a hold of hex himself. Mm -hmm. But it's an undergarment that basically eliminates our electric magnetic field mm -hmm. so animals don't think we're alive. Mm -hmm. They think it's an uh, inanimate object. In other words, we're dead. Mm -hmm. So it's not a threat to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty cool to have that stuff on. I don't go anywhere in the woods without my hex. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Whether it works or not, I believe it works. That's and, all that matters. And uh, I'm going to wear it because I don't want to take the chance. Mm -hmm. It's made a difference in my hunting. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, elk hunting is still my passion, and yeah. most of it, it you know, here is we like the elk hunting best yeah. of all. So, you know. But we we actually have um, I I prototype tested a deer grunt tube last year that's new. For this year mm -hmm. and it sounds awesome um you know we had prior before the dialect tube which would grunt and then it would also do your doe bleeds mm -hmm. this tube also does that however it has a snort wheeze feature as well um so it's very dynamic and the sound on it is vastly improved over our our former model right. which was also good sounding but our new deer grunt call is incredible sounding. Well, there you go again. It's a different sound, different pitch. Yeah. It's going to help bring the animals in mm -hmm. a little more readily than mm -hmm. the old sound. Mm -hmm. just, you got to change up yeah. all the time on your animals. Keep things going. I'm convinced that the reason I got my, my uh, Missouri rifle buck this year is because of that call. Because last morning, Yogi and I had three hours to sit, and it was a dead morning. Like, nothing was moving. Mm -hmm. And I sat in the box blind and I hit that grunt and I was rattling horns and I did that a few times and pretty soon we heard a ruckus and I thought the deer winded us and they were, um, the deer was like blowing. But apparently a lot of times deer will blow when they're chasing does and pretty soon this buck runs in and, and um, two of them actually came, come running in and the one was kind of a defect on one side and, and the other one was just a, a nice nine and, and I uh, had an 80 yard shot on him and got a nice buck, you know, nice mature deer on the last day. And, and I don't think we would have had any action 
if it wouldn't have been for for doing the grunting mm-hmm. and the rattling mm-hmm. like um just you know to be able to take that call and in a rifle setting obviously it's still peak of the rut in for midwest whitetail with a gun um opening weekend but just to be able to, to have that opportunity to to watch a call go to work like that not outside of the elk setting i mean everybody thinks about calling elk and obviously rattling and, and grunting deer is is popular in the midwest but uh, it's so much fun for me as a, as an avid elk hunter to go out there and learn, like, hey, I can have the same type of fun with a white-tailed deer as I do yeah. in the elk woods. Right. I know I went to Hawaii the last well, the last two years. I've been there twice yeah. now, and I'm going over again. You're going over in I'm April, going. too. Mm-hmm. But even axis deer hunting now, mm-hmm. I'm learning how to call them in, and, mm-hmm. and that's a rush. Mm-hmm. You know, they're a, quite a skittish little animal, but it's another sound that we've developed into our company. We're going to make axis deer calls, and, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's something to add to our arsenal. Mm-hmm. So people, mm-hmm. when they do that, yeah. they have an opportunity to go over there and mm-hmm. make something different besides just spotting and stalking. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they can do the calling and get them to come to them. Yeah, so. same, with, same with the road here. You know, Yogi's over there. Um, he has an outfit in Sweden for roe deer hunting, and last year, well, I guess it's been a year and a half uh, ago that, that we got our bucks and we were able to use the calls, and, and it's a lot of fun. Those deer come in, and they're looking, and they're so tiny. You know, they're 50-pound deer. Mm. So when the grass is tall, they're bounding in over this tall grass, and all you see is little heads. Fing, mm-hmm. fing, fing. It's yeah. the funniest thing, and they come in, and they're so alert, and it's such a fun hunt. Yeah. Um, and I just can't believe how much, you know, the diversity of the company has changed over the years. But really, our tried and true line is, is elk. Yep. I mean, that's that's what we're famous for. And, I mean, and that's where we hang our head, our bread and butter, and calling elk. And obviously, I, and I, you can attest to this, we probably all think it's the most exciting thing out there to do. Absolutely. It's the best game in town. But with that being said, also, you talk about calling deer and calling turkeys. Just what we can put out there as far as our products and how quality they are we're able to do all that because calling all those animals and having them come in and interaction uh the calling sequences that's what the fun that's what's exciting you know so um it's it's fun I, i'm a guy that rocky's a way better turkey caller than i i'm very novice at that but i can do enough to interact with them and it doesn't get me as excited as with the elk but it's something I don't know. that it, 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 it's it, tough it. to beat but white-tailed deer um it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's I all mean, good. <laughs> a little walk through. We got a little walk through. Yeah. It's a junior walker. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it happens at the shows. I'm like, kid. The drill caller there. <laughs> it happens. He's cute. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've hunted whitetail all my life and, and killed a lot of whitetail. I have, I've killed some mule deer. Yeah. But not as many as whitetail. And I've got to where I've got into the passion of wanting to hunt more mule deer now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because I've hunted so many whitetail. But whitetail are such a... a impressive animal oh. and they're so tough you know they are so sharp i don't know if there's a harder animal to kill than a monstrously big white tail yes. with a bow I, I, they're, they're so, smart they're so smart yeah. we yeah. were hunting this year and i was gun hunting and it was the only day all year that we had bucks chasing and i was in the stand i was shaking so hard i was shaking the stand my husband's like christy what are you, what is going on? I'm like, <laughs> literally, I convulsing in the stand. I was so excited for the whitetail chase. Like when those bucks mm-hmm. really chase, holy smokes! Mm-hmm. Like they're pretty impressive. Oof. Those big old. Rocks. I had like a mid 150s come through, and I never could get him shot. He was yeah. running and chasing so hard, and by the time I went to set up on him, I lost my opportunity. I was convulsing in the stand. My husband's like, you're shaking the camera. And I had to stand and like lock out my knees. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> white-tailed deer and, and elk, I mean, they flat just make me sick. Yep. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I just lose my mind. Mm-hmm. I can't help it. I don't know. No. Can't you do a lot of whitetail hunting back in South Dakota, haven't you? Yeah, that's yeah. where I grew up, and that's kind of how I got my start. I hunted elk much later. You know, I didn't start hunting elk until about 2008, and once I called in a cow, I think it was my second year, I was hooked on that, but uh, a lot of pheasant hunting, a lot of uh, whitetails growing up, and I kind of switched to hunting mule deer once I moved to Montana, and now I'm back into hunting whitetails again, yeah. and the rut is, it's hard to beat to be in a tree stand and just have them running back and forth and you well, never know what's going to come oh, in during you the ride. Know. You know, it, yeah. it just well the nice thing about whitetail is they're everywhere they are yeah. you don't matter what state you go to there's whitetail they'll hunt yeah you know and the mule deer are getting so beat up by everything that they're 
you know, they get susceptible to diseases, mountain lions, oh, and predators. wolves, and yeah. just, mm-hmm. they're an animal that is just not as tough like a whitetail. Mm-hmm. A whitetail adapts to anything. Mm-hmm. They can live in your backyard, the biggest buck there is, and mule deer. And you'll never mm-hmm. see him yeah. except for on mm-hmm. a camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Okay. But, okay. Uh, you know, getting into our, the elk calls and stuff, it's, that's still our mainstay. Yeah. And I did come up with a new signature series of my own, mm-hmm. which all these years I've always just built calls or mm-hmm. built signature series for other people. Yeah. And, and I finally decided to kind of put a little my niche into yeah. it. And I've come out with a bull basher, mm-hmm. is a grunt tube, mm-hmm. and I've got three diaphragms that are mm-hmm. uh, unique and, and different than what I, I've had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so something for us to look forward to. And it's, I did it again to make a different sound. Mm-hmm. So we have that opportunity to go out there and present a new sound to our elk mm-hmm. that they've never heard before. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what it's all about. It's mm-hmm. not to just build a call because it's my call. It's, yeah. I build it to make it work. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been fun building these new calls. Mm-hmm. And I've still got, like I said, I've got new ideas coming out. And you know, it's going to be fun to bring them to mm-hmm. the public. and see what we're going to do with them. So. Yeah, and it's exciting to launch them and put them out there. And it's exciting for us. And Chris, you know, when Rocky sends you a package in the mail with a new diaphragm, you know, we're going to pilot this, try this. And you put it in your mouth, and with about a half a second, you're like, he's done it again. Mm-hmm. You hit another home run. And so, uh, and that happens much more often than not, you yeah. know. And, and so that's exciting <laughs> as well. So. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Stop that ridiculous singing, Hank. Well, Larry, we gotta celebrate Tink's 50th. Celebrate? That dang Tink's is why we're up on this wall. Come on, Larry. In honor of the golden anniversary, it's time to pop a cork on a bottle of Tink's 69. Tink's 69? It's not champagne. You don't drink it, you idiot. Whoa, just the smell is making me tipsy, Larry. That Tink's 69 is liquid love. Tink's, America's oh, number oh, one buck lure for 50 years. I give up. First dibs on Larry's Tink's. I, I can't do this anymore. I'm always up for Tink's. There's the new ones right there, the signature series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you guys, if you want to go on my YouTube channel, um, those of you that are watching, Rocky and I sat down and we did a whole demo with him using the Bull Basher Bugle Tube, and then every one of these diaphragm calls, there's a video for each one. So if you want to hear the sounds that these calls make and then learn more specifically about um, what each one of the them can series, do, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That, that is on my YouTube channel as yes. well. Yeah, but just real quick, you know, we're running out of time here, but what's really unique is the the bull. Yeah, uh, that's my favorite one. You know, it's, the, the bull is the bomb. We designed it, <laughs> it for people that are allergic to, to latex. latex. Mm-hmm. It's a non-latex material, and I'm not giving out what it is. It's top yeah. secret. But it's not just for people that are allergic. It's for everybody. It yeah. makes good sounds, you know. But now the people that are allergic to it have an opportunity to use a mouth call mm-hmm. diaphragm. Mm-hmm. Without which worrying. is new. Yes, mm-hmm. which is new. So, and the others, you know, the, the, the latexes, like you say, you can go on your line and, yeah. and listen to all that stuff. And we explain what each one of them does. Mm-hmm. But they are different and they are unique and they do work. So kind of fast fire, Kent, what's your favorite, what's your favorite call set, set up? Like what is your go-to? Oh, it changes year to year. Right now, this last fall, I used the bull basher tube with the bull, uh, the elk slayer. I used a lot for elk or my uh, cow calls. That was kind of my go-to, and that's my main three. And then I'll throw in an open read, which I'll run the Voodoo or um, the On Fire, mm-hmm. and that kind of just gives me a well-rounded setup. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, my mainstays have always been the Black Magic and the Reaper, so those are in there too. So I've got a variance of calls that I, I have, and it, it's weird because it's just day to day. I'll say, yep, this looks like this should work today, and been success has gone way up so what about you Josh similar to Kent I have an arsenal that I like um, but to make it easy at, at this point if I had to go in the woods and the tough northwest and you said Josh you have to be into an elk um, two buys so Rocky way back when prototype in the Whoppy Whacker sent me one I mean it still has the glue in it I mean it's it's back behind the, the stage here and I cannot get rid of that thing. Yeah, the, that wop, it. I, yeah, it's like part of my soul. It's mm-hmm. and it's you know the mind over matter. I'm superstitious from the old baseball background, anyways. But the thing, that wop whacker is just an amazing, amazing tube. Um, Read wise, 
I've always been a Raging Bull fan. It works great. Uh, Rocky with that black magic. If that's that's my go-to, and that's my go-to on the stage in the calling championships, but more so where we hang our hat is in the Elk Woods, you know, blue collar public land, and it, it just flat out works. External, trophy wife. I, I love the trophy wife. Um, I've had a lot of success uh, with that setup right there. You know, anytime you're confident in what calls you use yeah. and you, you know they're going to work, that really helps in your ability to have more success yeah. because confidence in what you do is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, if, as long as you know that it's going to work, man, it helps so much. Yep. So it's not really that my calls are better than mm -hmm. anybody else, but it does give you a different variety yeah. and a different tone pitches. But like he's saying, he loves a whoppy whacker. And, you know, I got to say it's one of the best calls that I've designed mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the years past, I, I designed what they call the Monarch, mm -hmm. and that was one of the best calls that I had ever even been around, but it was too bulky, mm -hmm. too long. But man, did that thing make some sounds. Mm -hmm. It wasn't marketable, yeah. but we had it out there and it worked really good. So, yeah. so my go-to this last year was the Bull Basher for, for the Bugle Tube. I've always been a diehard Remedy fan. Mm -hmm. Like that has been the, the Blue Remedy, love that call. Um, Double on your new series is my other go-to, but then I have the Wild Fury diaphragm call, and right. you know that call we kind of work together for people with a slightly more narrow palate, mm -hmm. and um, like the Remedy and your call, the Bull, I I can't a little sideways in my mouth, and so I years of blowing diaphragm calls without them you know necessarily fitting perfectly out I learned to cant them and blow them and so I just position them in my mouth a little differently so I can use those calls that are you know a little big for my palate and um, but my um, wild fury call uh, has been good then this year for external read I really like the little flirt Matt Brimmer's call it was it's a great sounding yeah. little call now I don't want to take away from my wild thing signature series right. call because I also love that mm -hmm. one. But you know, for a small size, that little flirt, mm -hmm. you know, that Matt, you know, worked with you guys designing had had great sound. And um, you know, I think a lot of it is just trying. You know, we talked about palette shapes and mouths, and there is a difference in the the palette plate tops with the dome mm -hmm. top or the flat palette. And and if you guys are at these shows um, at any point throughout the year, or you see a pro staff member somewhere ask them like hey help me fit what's going to fit in my mouth best and and a lot of times you know i tell people don't buy a diaphragm call buy three different kinds don't just buy the the dome top calls buy a pallet plate in a dome top and try a couple different and you know there's there's you spend a lot of money testing calls but everybody's going to have that call like you guys heard on this panel today like we all kind of have a different go-to um, on the diaphragms, yeah. which is why you make so many different calls. It is, because everybody's roof their mouths are shaped different, Yeah. and I don't care if it don't fit and it don't seal off, it's not going to work. I yeah. don't care how good a call it yeah. is. So, you know, it, it's one of those things that if they come to the show here, we'll fit them. Yeah. We can look in the roof of their mouth and say, this is a call you're going to have to mm -hmm. stay with. We've got some people that can blow any of them, yeah. you know, like I'm lucky to be that yeah. way. But there's some of them out there, their roof of their mouths are shaped so bad that they, I've had to custom build them. Yeah. I've had to take pliers and tweak it so they fit just right yeah. in there. Then they start working. Mm -hmm. So just because it's a diaphragm on the wall doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Well, and the other thing I think uh, a lot of people are apprehensive to pick up a diaphragm call because they have a gag reflex. Yeah. And you've designed your calls to, to sit a little farther forward in the mouth. So that if the, you know are one of those people that has a strong gag reflex, that you can still operate these calls without hitting that and you know choking yourself to death. Yeah, it gets away from the gag yeah. reflex yeah. area, you know. And not only that, the way it stands up at a certain angle makes the sounds easier to obtain. Yeah. When they sit flat in your mouth, you have to use the back part of your tongue to hold it up. Yep. And it's really hard to operate doing mm -hmm. that. So by putting that plate on there, it puts it in the correct angle mm -hmm. and it makes it a lot easier to work. So. It forces you to use yeah. it mm -hmm. in the right position. Yep. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we're here at the Western Hunt Expo and they're about the doors ready to open are, the doors. The doors are opening. Open. So that means we have to sign out, you guys. <laughs> and we have to get back to work and 
Sell more calls. Boy, the crowd was great yesterday. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. You know, we appreciate all of you guys that are coming down. And as with anything, you know, we have power in the purse. And it's good to support companies that support what we believe in. And, you know, Rocky's been in this business for a long time. And, and Josh is the new, you know, the new head of marketing and, and doing a lot of the decision making here with Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. And, you know, he's a former law enforcement officer and, you know, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls supports hunting, supports conservation, um, supports uh, our men and women in, in service and in blue, and, and, it, and it's good to work with a company and spend your money with people that you know are producing an American-made product. Mm -hmm. You guys are based out of Idaho, and everything's made right here you know, in the U.S. Um, as much as possible. Um, you know, some of the products you know, are assembled here. But yeah. for all the our, most part, it's yeah. made it's in the made USA. All our mouth diaphragms are made right in the shop. Yeah. We we bring in plastic parts and then we assemble everything. Mm -hmm. so. so it is it is a company you guys can you know spend your money and feel absolutely confident about that. Retail locations around the country. I mean, Cabela's, Bass Pro, pretty Sports much anywhere you know, that Shields, yeah. and, and most all your local archery shops, your mm -hmm. small mom and pop mm -hmm. shops. We're in Ace Hardware, we're in Buy Rights, and you know, on and on and on. So the calls have been distributed pretty much across the United States in every place you can possibly think of. And, and yeah. if you guys are wanting some calls and you're not finding them in your local pro shop, go online, go to buglingbull.com. You guys can shop the wolf howling systems. You can shop moose calls. You can shop roe deer calls, elk calls, turkey calls, predator calls. Yes. It's all online. They'll ship direct to consumer there as well. So if there's something special you want to try and you're not finding it at your local shop, ask them to bring it in or, you know, just get online yourself and, and see if you can find it. And, and if you have questions, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call the folks down at Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's people that, you know, if the person that answers the phone can't answer your question, somebody on this team will call you back and, and help you. Absolutely. And that's the great thing about them is, is they're, they want everybody to be successful in the woods and, and we want to make sure all of you have the best hunting experience possible. So that's what we're here for. Thanks, Christy, for having us. And yeah. It's always a pleasure talking with Signing you. Signing out. Absolutely. <laughs> out. Thanks, Christy. Thank you, yes, guys. thank you. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.